Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another awesome video on the channel. Hope you guys are doing great today because I know I am. If you guys have read the title of today's video, you guys know exactly what today is. January 16th. Today is the 10th anniversary of LEGO Chima. I know I'm hype about it. I'm celebrating the anniversary today by watching some Chima episodes. And it's just, it's been a great time, I gotta say. I've been watching some of the episodes before I'm recording this video right now, and I'm really feeling the anniversary. In today's video, I just wanted to talk about a lot of strong points about Chima that I really liked. I just wanted to take this video to have a cool video dedicated to the 10th anniversary of Chima. I can't believe it's been around for a decade now it's completely insane and i just think it's great that the community is still keeping it alive and stuff like that so yeah i, I don't want to keep the video too long let's just get into it first strong point i wanted to talk about was um the story the the the, the story of lego chima is great a lot of people will watch a TV show and they will say that there's certain strong points about that TV show, like there is with Shima. And a lot of the times, a lot of people would say that the story isn't one of them. The story is very mid and it isn't very that great. And I have to say, the story for Lego Shima is amazing. I, I, I love it a lot. I like, the, I like what they did with it. Like, they did like a great job with Shima story it just it still blows my mind like how much good went into this story like it's crazy like I love season one like I like the rivalry uh rivalry rivalry with Laval and Krager I thought that was a great starting point and with with, with season one with like the tribes battling against each other and it's all this stuff that's happening at the same time. I think that's a great strong point of this story. Season two rolls around. If a lot of people don't know, it is my favorite. I like it a lot. I like the spiders, the bats, and the scorpions. That little part. I like it a lot because when you go from season one to season two, and you see now that everybody that was fighting against each other in season one are now working together. And what I mean by working together is it's mostly the main, main, the main characters. The, 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 the main characters who were fighting each other for this long time with mostly Krager commanding all of it. Now Krager and everybody else is now working together to achieve one goal. And that is to make sure that Mount Kavora is saved from the cloudburst or whatever. And I think that's great. I, I, I think it's great. And then after that season, we move on to the last one with the fire uh, chief and all of the ice tribes. And then on top of that, we have a new uh, race. I, I think they're eagles. Um, don't quote me on that. I'm going to say a lot of stuff that might not be be correct. I'm telling you guys right now, I love Chima the Death, but I haven't seen Chima in a very, very long time. That's why I've been watching a couple of episodes for the anniversary, and I just... Please don't murder me in the comments. I might say the wrong stuff, but just bear with me, please. So... I forget what they are, but it's the it's the firebirds, and then uh, they have the, the 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 tigers and all that, and I think that's great. It builds on top of Chima lore, it talks about ancient and ancient stuff that happened in Chima, and I think it's great. And then like also a new type of chi, fire chi. Like when I when I watched the first episode of season three and then like and onwards and i saw that i'm like that's awesome i'm like that is amazing like i thought that they were just going to keep 
like normal chi as like the power up for the entire series. And they actually made a brand new chi and it fits into the story and I think that's great. Um, there's, there's a lot of great stuff about the story. It's amazing. Like, the story has a lot of good... I didn't even scratch the surface of the story. I just wanted to talk about a couple of strong points from all the seasons and stuff like that. So, let me move on to the second strong point of LEGO Shima, and that is the characters. So, I'm not going to talk about every single character, I'm gonna talk about like some of them because this video is gonna be like 10 million hours long if I sit here and say stuff about every single character. But I'm gonna talk about the side characters real fast and then I'll get into the main ones and talk about some of the main ones and stuff like that. So I think the side characters for Chima are amazing. They just have a lot to them. For example, one of my favorite set of side characters, which like I said before, don't murder me in the comments for this, but I think they're beavers. Not 100% sure, I forgot what their tribes are. But they are the little tiny guys who whenever something gets destroyed, they're always fix it, fix it, fix it. Um, and I'm like, those guys are literally the peak of side characters for Chima. Those guys are funny and they always come out of nowhere whenever something needs fixing. And I just think like, it doesn't even overstay its welcome too. Like it's, it's, it's so good that like, whenever they do it, it's just, it, it's literally just a bonus. Like they are so great. And also another side character, which I don't even think you can really call him a side character, Again, I don't remember his name, but it was the blue bird who always tried to give Cragger dental assistance with his teeth. I think that whole plot line thing, I think that was great. That was really cool. There are a lot of other amazing side characters that I can speak of, but these are just the two that come to my head right now. Uh, let me know what your guys' favorite side character is in the comment section below. But those are the two that I chose and honestly remembered as great little side characters. So yeah, I want to talk about a couple of main characters. Don't get me wrong, I love every single one of the main cast, the main heroes of Chima. But I, it'll take too long to talk about all of them, so I'm going to talk about a couple of them. First off, Laval. Laval is a great leader. I think he suits the team very well as the leader of the Heroes of Shima. He went through a lot of stuff with Cragger and just a whole bunch of stuff, and he's just a great character overall. He is a solid, solid a plus in my opinion if i were to rank it he'd be a solid a plus now cragger cragger is a great character too i think cragger has better like progression than laval i think it's just his character of of like of like of like laval being his best friend and how his parents got trapped down into the uh to the gorge and he just, you know, it, it was crazy. He stole the chi with uh, Laval. And then, like, after a while, his sister was, like, using that flower to her advantage on him. And he was just starting wars between all the tribes. And, like, over time, like, once it gets into season two, like, I think his character progressed a lot. Like, now that, like, at the point of season two, when he was a good guy... I think I think that I think that progression was shown in, in his character. And not to say that that progression isn't shown for all the other main characters, it truly is, but I think it shows more in Cragger's character than anybody else. But yeah, um uh, let's talk about Eris real fast. Eris's best girl. I love Eris. 
Eris is great. Eris has always been by um, Laval's side, also Cragger for the time before he, you know, went and did bad guy stuff. Um, she's great. I have nothing really else to say. Um, she is a, a, so, a solid character. And if I would have had to give Cragger and her a ranking, I guess Cragger would probably put it S and Eris probably like an A minus or something. So that's, I, I, I don't really have a ranking. It's just, that's what I would put as like, like good main character status and like where I would place them at. It's mostly my opinion. So don't like, again, murder me in the comments or this stuff. But yeah, um, I think the last one I'll talk about, because I already talked about like three of them already. The last one I want to talk about, I never get his name right, so again, please don't murder me in the comments. I already have two limbs left, okay? So, um, Vladlik. I know I probably said that right. I think it's Vladlik or Vadlik. I know I'm saying it wrong. I'm never really good with crazy names like that, so I'm sorry, but I think you guys know who I'm talking about, so just go with that. So, he is the bear, and I like him a lot because he just sleeps. And like, and like, and like, I know you're gonna say, oh, well, he just sleeps. That's, that's dumb. I'm like, no, like, I kind of like it because, like, whenever everybody in season one is just like, doing battles and stuff, they just sleep. They're just night-night. And I think that's kind of funny, honestly. And, um... And, um, also, 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 I love his progression, too, in Season 3, when they have that psychic connection with the Ice Bears, and they finally wake up, and they stay awake. And, like, they get those golden markings and all that. And, like, they actually fight, finally, instead of just sleeping the entire time. And I think that was, like, a cool little way, story-wise, to get them back up. And especially, it's good progression for Vladvik. So, yeah, those are a couple of main characters I wanted to talk about. There's, like, a couple of other ones, too. Like, not to keep the video long. Let's just keep it at that. So, yeah, that is my verdict for this video. I just want to talk about the good parts of the story and um, and some good parts about the characters and the side characters and stuff like that. I can go on and on. I think the Lego sets are amazing. A lot of people didn't really like the Lego sets. Me, personally, I love the sets. They had a unique build for a lot of them, and the minifigures were amazing, too. So there's one. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, 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 I love this series a lot, and um, I, I just gotta say, I mean, I appreciate everybody in the Shima community who is keeping this series alive. Like, it is, it, it is insane that we're, we're at the 10th anniversary of LEGO Shima, and there is still a gigantic community for Shima who is still keeping this going. And it just ama it, it, it just amazes me, and it's and it's great to 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 see and hear, and hopefully, like I said, one day we can hopefully get a reboot or like a continuation of Chima back on TV. Hopefully, Lego will see that there's still a fan base even ten years going on that they can try to continue this and. I don't know, maybe Lego just doesn't see it. I don't know, like maybe like maybe Lego thinks that Ninjago is too successful to um to worry about bringing Shima back. But I don't know. Um like I said at the start of the video, I know that I am a Ninjago primarily Ninjago YouTuber. I understand that. But that doesn't mean I don't like Shima. That doesn't mean I hate Chima. I'm not one of those people who are like, oh, well, Ninjago's better than Chima, and, like, Ninjago's better than Nexo Knights. Like, I don't say that. Like, I love Ninjago, Chima, and Nexo Knights the same amount. They are all childhood shows that I grew up on that I am still passionate about today, which is the reason why I made this channel in the first place, was to express my love 
and appreciation for these great LEGO series. So please be civil in the comments if people do comment. And yeah, I do appreciate all the support I have on the channel. And yeah, catch you guys in the next piece.